today we're going to have a look at how to do an in-game console or maybe a notifications bar. We're not going to do user input into that, but you can easily add that later. What this is going to focus on is things like messages where you go player A has killed player B or player A is disconnected, those kind of messages. You'll see something like this in Counter-Strike. You'll see it in League of Legends. It's just a very common thing to see in games to give people back some notifications of what's happening. So I have started by just grabbing a screenshot of a game that I'm working on and putting it in the background so that we have something that looks more like a game to work on. Then I'm going to go up to UI. I'm going to create a canvas. And to that canvas, I'm going to add a text mesh pro text component and import TMP essentials. I am really keen on using text mesh pro for all text. You'll notice I do that over and over and over. Okay, so next up, I also like to make my canvas my camera. I drop it into my main camera and I change it to one. I think this is even really important to do this kind of thing when it's only on your main camera. So for example, if you're showing a pause menu, you don't necessarily want your in-game console to show. Okay, so let's have a look at our canvas. Frame it up. We'll look at it from the back. We'll grab our text component. And let's put it into the place that we maybe want it. So I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to do a six line console. So I'm just typing in here by line so that I can see what it will look like. Now it currently doesn't fit within my box, so I'm going to change my font size to make that fit. I'm probably a little bit large on the font size at the moment, but that's okay. I'm going to leave it that way so it's easy to see. I'm also just going to drag these little triangles to the corner so that everything scales around it. The next thing I'm going to do is this kind of doesn't necessarily sit well on my background. And I've played around with a few colors, like even changing it to black, and it doesn't necessarily fit that well. And I think this is a common problem in a lot of games when you have a lot of colors. So let's put a little bit of a background to our console. So to do that, I'm going to add an image. I'm going to put it underneath my text. I'm going to pull it down. And make it just a bit bigger. Let's turn it to black so we can actually see our text. Something like that. And now you don't want this large chunk of black obscuring your game, so just drop the opacity back on it. And then you can still see your game, but it also can let your text pop out a little bit. This is a really common strategy that I've seen a lot of consoles using game. So that's all you really need to do in terms of setting it up in game. So let's go and code and make this work. I'm first of all, I'm going to create my scripts folder. And I'm going to just add a console to this. The console script. And double click it and it will open up in Visual Studio. First up, we're going to need to add the library for Text Mesh Pro. Then we'll need a reference to that text field that's going to be our console. After this, we're going to need an array that's going to hold all the different lines of text that are in the console. I'm going to do this with an array of strings so that I can simply push each one back in the array as you add a new one. I also have the intention that when the console shows on the screen, after a certain number of seconds, it's going to fade away. 
that's kind of typical of what might happen. Like you might see a damage notification, then it'll fade away so that it automatically goes away from the player. To do this, I'm going to need a couple of variables. I'm going to need one for the timer. I'm also going to make another one for what the maximum time should be because that may be something you want to change in your settings. So having it in a variable makes it easy if you want to add a settings menu for it. Now in our start function, we're going to have to initialize this strings console to the number of entries that we want. And I'm also going to set my timer to hide to five so that whenever I press play, it shows. You probably won't want that in real life, but for testing purposes, it will be great to see the console to start with. Now that we've done this, we're going to need a couple of functions to make this work. We're going to need one function to add a line and I'm going to make that as a public function so that when you call that from a different script, you'll be able to see it. And that's how you'll typically add lines to the console. For testing, we'll just add the lines from within here, but you can actually add it from any script and that's how you do it in a real life situation. And I'm then going to write another function to apply this text to the console. So let's start by the add line. Now for the add line function, we're just going to send it the string that we want to add. So what's happening with this for loop is we're starting at the end of the array and we're putting the second last element into the last element, the third last element into the second last and so on. And then when we now we're at the point where we can now add a new line to the zero element of the array. And after this, we'll have to apply the text. We haven't written that function yet, but I'll write it in anyway. Now in here, what we're going to need to do is we're going to make a string as a variable, and then we're going to get this whole array and combine it into one long string that we can put into the text array. You could actually add each of the lines individually as, they, as you go. I prefer putting them into a single variable and then passing that single variable into the text field. We'll do this in a for loop. Again, we'll start at the end, end of the for loop and then move our way to the front. That way we've got the element that's the oldest at the top and the element that's the youngest at the bottom. The last thing we're going to need to do is apply this new console string to the text and then we're going to reset our timer. Final thing we need to do is go to our update function and make the timer work. So if our timer to hide is greater than zero, we'll need to take time.delta time off that. And time.delta time is the time since the last frame. Now I don't want my console just to disappear hard. I want to see it fade out. So I'm going to change the, the alpha channel in the console text's color to make it fade. I'm just going to be able to use this timer to hide value because if it's greater than one, it'll just be a solid color. And then as it gets from one to zero, you'll see that fade out. Now in here, I want the color to be the same so that whatever we've picked inside the editor stays. So I'm just going to use the RGB values of the current color. So we need to do one last thing because at the moment while the console works, we need to actually put some data into it to see that happen. And to do that in our start function, we're just going to call the add line function. And we'll do this six times to fill the field up. Actually, we'll just do it for so that we don't use all of the space. We also need to go down here and use a plus to actually add to this string. I made a little 
Before we go and test, I've realized I just made a little mistake. Down here, we need to actually go plus equals because we want to add to the end of S string, not just change S string. Now let's give this a test. I'm going to create an empty object for this and call it the console and just drag my script over onto it and then put the text field into it. And now you can see the four lines are showing. Let's go back to our script and add a few more functions so that we can add lines using key presses. So I'm going to go if input dot get key down. I'm going to use the, a key code for this of Q. So I don't need a dot here. I'm not going to use my brackets. I'm just going to indent because we're going to have a few of these and they, it'll become a bit long if I keep putting the brackets in. I do prefer when, I, when you start coding to always put the brackets in, but you don't actually need them if there's one line of code. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make a few different ones. And we're just going to use the WER keys. What I also wanted to demonstrate was how you can change these using the rich text format. So for example, if you did something like this, you can make one of the words bold. You can also add color in. If you look up the rich text in the Unity manual, you'll see all the different options for color. You can either write one of their preset colors or you can put in one of the web values. It's really important that there's no spaces in here, otherwise it won't work. That's different to other parts of your C Sharp script. So here is one of the places it's syntax important. And if you're in a country that spells color in a different way, like I am, you have to get used to this US spelling because that's just the way it is. You can also use the italics. You can even do things like add textures to them. You can change the size of the text. But let's save this and go back to Unity and give it a test. So you can see you've got the console. You can see it's faded away. And you can see adding line to text. Now one problem that you can see with our fading is we're actually at the moment only fading the text, we're not fading this box. So maybe let's go and fix that next. And now because we're using the UI, we need to add the UI library. So for this, we're going to go image background dot color. And I might put an if before this. So if the timer to hide is greater than 1.0, we'll do something else. We'll do something different. So going back to Unity, Having a look at my image background, I've got a value set to about 67. So that's the maximum value that I want. I'm going to use the same technique of keeping the same RGB. Now what I have here is I want to make sure that my value of my alpha is 67 and to do that you divide it by 254. Now for the timer being less than zero, in this situation we can just multiply it by timer to hide. Now let's save that and have a look at it. We need to go to our console, we need to apply our image and now hit play.
And now you can see after a few seconds it fades correctly. So that's the basics of how you make your console. It's really quite flexible. If you wanted to go with something that was using chat, which you'd have to also do a multiplayer implementation, you'd just add an input bar below. Likewise, you could add an input bar if you wanted the user to be able to put commands into their into the console. And maybe at some time, if there's an interest, I'll make an example of how to read commands in from the console and pass them and then do something useful with the command. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it was useful to you. If it did, I really appreciate if you subscribe, like or comment. Helps let me know if you like the videos and want to see more. And I really do want to make more of these. I enjoy sharing what I know about Unity. And just remember to keep going and have fun and just make games that you enjoy playing.